from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. So welcome to the National Book Festival. This is the 15th National Book Festival. My name is Kathy Meisner. I review picture books for the Washington Post book world. The Washington Post is a charter sponsor of the National Book Festival. Our next speaker, artist and illustrator Elise Parsley, studied drawing and creative writing at Minnesota State University in Moorhead, Minnesota. She and her husband now live in South Dakota, but Elise's art has been featured many places in Minnesota, North Dakota, and in her new home as well, and now is in your hands. Elise knows something about school. She has spent time in schools promoting literacy as part of an AmeriCorps academic enrichment program. And her hard work at learning to write and illustrate to create picture books paid off in a wonderful short time, 72 hours or so, with her third book maybe, in excitement and a wonderful result. Well, I'll let her tell you about it. Elise Parsley seems to know something about what to bring to school and her debut picture book has something to say about what not to bring. Elise Parsley. Thank you, oh my goodness. Look at all of the people who didn't fit into Buzz Aldrin's session. This is, <laughs> this is really great. Thank you, Buzz. All right, so, I, and I also would like to thank the Library of Congress for inviting me here today. This is an incredible honor to come all the way from the little um, town I'm from in South Dakota, all the way here to meet all of you. Um, and like, like um, I can't remember her name, but as she introduced me, she did mention that my story was kind of a crazy one. I went to school and I studied art and I studied writing and then I graduated and I worked really hard for about two years. I pretended that I was a full-time writer and illustrator. I really wasn't. I just pretended I was and then I was working at night as a piano teacher. Um, and after about two and a half years of that, I got in touch with a wonderful agent who got me my first book deal like two days after I met this agent. He got me um, a three book deal and the first book from that deal is my, the story I'm gonna share with you today. If you ever want to bring an alligator to school, don't. So all of you kids down here, is anybody here in school already this year? Did some of you start already? Does anybody start on Tuesday? A Bunch of you have to start on Tuesday, so this is your last hurrah of the summer. You starting on Tuesday? Well, good luck, you're gonna like it, I think. Okay, now since we're talking about school, I want you guys to cheer really loud when I name your favorite class, okay? I'm gonna name a bunch of different classes in school and when, you, when I say your favorite one, cheer really loud because I'm gonna ask for cheering in my session and some booing. But don't boo when you hear the worst class. Don't, don't do that, just cheer when I say your favorite. Okay, ready? Who loves history class? Oh, okay, who loves math class? Oh, we have some really passionate mathematicians here. How about science class? Science, all right. How about reading class? Guys, we're at a book convention. Come on, who likes reading class? Woohoo! Okay, who likes gym class? Yeah, that's, that's, that was my favorite. How about spelling class? I was not a fan of spelling either, so it's okay. How about recess? Yeah. Recess is awesome. And music class? Yeah. Music class. I used to be a piano teacher, so I love music class. How about art class? Yeah. All right, so you guys, you seem to like most of the stuff that happens at school. That's good. And how many of you in your school have ever done show and tell before? Anybody here ever done show and tell? Yes, I have done show and tell. Actually, I remember a couple different times where I did show and tell, and they weren't that good. 
but nothing ever went quite as wrong as it does for Magnolia when she has show and tell. So I'm gonna read this book to you about a little girl named Magnolia who has show and tell in school and it goes really, really wrong. Hopefully, you'll learn something from it. All right. This book is called, If You Ever Want to Bring an Alligator to School, Don't. Okay, I'm gonna say that title again and I want you to all say the don't part with me because that's really important. Ready? If you ever want to bring an alligator to school, Don't. No. All right, you guys got it. No. So, Starting off, we have the classroom, or not the classroom, the hallway with the lockers, which I did not have in my school. This is a fancy school. And then we have the title page. If you ever want to bring an alligator to school, no. If your teacher tells you to bring something from nature for show and tell, she means a hollow stick, or a bird's nest, or some sparkly rocks. She does not want you to bring an alligator. If you bring an alligator anyway, she'll tell you that alligators are trouble. You'll tell her that it's okay, and that you know all about alligators. This alligator will be quiet and good, and he won't eat anybody. Cross your heart. Have you guys ever crossed your heart before? It's serious business when you cross your heart. But during spelling, your teacher will hear laughing. Can you guys give me some laughing sounds? <laughs> yes, this is because the alligator is showing you funny pictures. Do you see these fun this funny picture up here that he's got? Who can tell me, what is that jumping off the diving board? A cupcake. And he's saying, oh, no. Why is he saying that? He's about to be eaten by an alligator. So this is a silly picture. It might make you laugh in class. And if you laugh in class, your teacher will write your name on the board. Can you guys write your name in the air for me? Spell your name for me. This name is Magnolia. And now, if you get your name on the board, you'll have to stand last in line for lunch. You'll have to take away the crayons and tell the alligator to be quiet and wait for show and tell. Then, during art, an airplane will fly across the room this is because the alligator will be showing you origami. Your teacher will draw a check by your name. And now you'll have to stay in from recess. You guys who really like recess, how do you think that would be? Ugh. Thumbs up, thumbs down, what do you think? Big thumbs down. One, one thumbs up? Oh, what? Oh, dear. Missing, show, missing recess would be the worst. Then, during math, you'll notice the alligator is hungry. <laughs> Don't worry, Magnolia is a quick thinker. You'll give the alligator three pieces of your favorite gum and beg him not to eat anyone, and for Pete's sake, to wait for show and tell. <sighs> the good thing is that you will keep him from eating any kids. The bad thing is that the alligator will smack and twirl the gum, and your teacher will notice. She'll draw two more checks by your name, and an underline. Are you guys drawing checks next to your name? Well, you're not being quite as naughty as this alligator, so. <sighs> now you'll have to go to the principal's office after school. Can you guys say this? Are you ready? This is what, this part of the book sounds like this. Bum, bum, bum. Can you say that with me? Bum, bum, bum. Things are looking bad. 
but they're about to get worse. During lunch, you won't even get to eat your egg and cheese sandwich because somebody will gobble up everything but the crusts. That's the worst. By now, of course, you'll wish that you'd brought a hollow stick or a bird's nest or some sparkly rocks for show and tell instead of an alligator. By now, you would rather have some dirt than an alligator. You will wish this alligator would just go home. Well, here's what I would do if I were you. First, at show and tell, you'll sit quietly and you'll learn about hollow sticks and bird's nests and sparkly rocks. Then it'll be your turn. This is, by the way, called a game face. <laughs> a game face is the face you make when you're ready for anything. Can you guys give me your game face? I had to, I had to practice my game face before I came up here to talk to you. I had to be ready. There's some good game faces down here, parents. All right, here she goes. You'll tell how alligators are super big. Do you know how big an alligator is, you guys? You know how big they are? They are as big as a kid, plus one kid, plus a teacher. They're really big. I just saw one at the zoo last week. He was huge. OK, you're going to tell how alligators are super big and how alligators have over 74 super sharp teeth. 74. That is like all of my teeth, plus all of this lady in the front, plus all of her teeth, plus your teeth and your teeth, because you're missing a couple of them. <laughs> so all of those teeth put together in one mouth. And you'll tell how alligators are super tough. It's a fact. They're strong, and they're tough, and they aren't scared of anything except other alligators and humans. Booga, 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 booga! What do you guys think he's saying right here? Uh-huh. Your teacher will be impressed. You might not even have to go to the principal's office for all the mischief that day. Do you guys see the alligator? Do you see him? You better help your parents if they don't see him. But then again, you might have to. Yeah, if you ever want to bring an alligator to school, don't. They're trouble. The end. All right, you guys, by the way, I heard you say don't at the end. I even forgot about that, and you said it with me. So let's say it one more time. If you ever want to bring an alligator to school, don't. Awesome. OK, now we've learned that it's not a good idea to bring an alligator. But what if your teacher does say to bring something from nature for show and tell? Do you guys have any good ideas of what you should bring? Sparkly rocks, that's a good one. Leaves. OK, actually, let's do this. Let's do a quiz. I will name something from nature. And if you think it's a good idea to bring it, I want you to cheer really, really loud. OK, let's practice cheering really, really loud for a good thing. All right, let's say a hollow stick. Yeah. Woo OK, now if I say something really, really bad, you have to boo, OK, and give a thumbs down. Ready? If I say, mm, I think you should bring an alligator with you. Yeah. Boo. Okay. Nice job. OK, here's the quiz. Are you ready? Some of these might be tricky. OK, if your teacher says to bring something from nature for show and tell, what if you brought flowers? Yeah. I would say thumbs up. Flowers are pretty safe. Let's try that again. Flowers. Okay, what about poison ivy? 
Do not, no, do not bring that to school. You guys over there. Parents, watch out for these ones. Okay, how about if you brought a little jar with some sand from the beach? How about a little bit of tree bark that you found? That's a pretty good one. How about a beehive? Oh no, this is very mixed. This is not good. You guys know what bees do, right? They do make honey, that's true. And it would be nice to have honey as a snack, but they also sting you. So I would say that should be a boo, yes. How about some colorful leaves? Okay, I'm from South Dakota, and if you go out in nature in South Dakota, you might find one of these, a cow pie. What do you, a cow pie is another word for cow poop. Would you bring it with you? Don't do it, don't do it, they smell, they smell. Do not bring a cow pie. How about a feather, if you found a feather? Yeah, you can bring a feather if you put it in a Ziploc bag and wash your hands. That would be my advice on that one. Okay, how about, um, we'll do one, two more. How about a clamshell? All right, and how about a volcano? Do not bring a volcano, do not. Oh dear. All right, next up, I'm gonna show you guys how I do a little bit of drawing. Now you've probably, if you've been here today, you've seen some really good artists and they draw super fast. They're really fast drawers. And I'm here today to tell you that not all artists are fast drawers. So I'm gonna try to draw, but it might not be as fast as some of those other guys. But I will tell you that if you practice, you can draw really well, but you do have to practice. So something that I've been practicing a lot is drawing alligators and drawing magnolia. The tip to drawing an alligator is to draw a big cucumber and then put a head on him with teeth. And the trick to drawing magnolia is to be really good at your shapes. So I want you guys to tell me some shapes. What are some shapes that you know? Oh, raise your hand. We're gonna pretend we're in school. Yes. A circle. I'm really good at circles. Well, now we'll see. Ooh, not my best circle. We'll fix it. There we go, circle. How about, what else? A rectangle. How many sides does a rectangle have? Four, okay, count them with me, ready? One, two, three, four. All right, there's a rectangle. Yeah. Which one? A triangle, how many sides on a triangle? Three, count them with me, make sure I get it right. One, two, three. Yes. A diamond. How many sides does a diamond have? Four. Four, it's like a square that you tipped over, right? So let's see, here's a diamond. One, two, three, four. All right, what other shapes are there? A square, and what's the difference between a square and a rectangle? A rectangle is a square that has four equal sides. Four equal sides, huh. Yeah, so let's, so if we wanted to turn this rectangle into a square, we would just have to make it, like we would have to draw the line like here instead, right? Yeah. So that would be a square. Okay, how about a couple more shapes? What do you know? A what? A rhombus. How many sides on a rhombus? I don't really actually know this answer, you guys. Is there a teacher out there who could tell me? A rhombus is a diamond. We already did one. Yeah. I did not cheer when we said math earlier, OK? Any other shapes? Hexagon. How many sides on a hexagon? Six. OK, let's, I'm going to draw it up here. Ready? One, two, are you counting? Three, four. All right, in the purple. An oval, and an oval is where you take your circle and you squish it a little, right? Yeah. All right, so here's my oval. 
Has anybody ever heard of this shape? Ah, a heart. Now, does anybody here ever have trouble with hearts? Because I do. My hearts are always a little lopsided. One side always ends up bigger than the other. But that happens, right? You just got to keep practicing. All right, I'll take one more shape. Who hasn't answered yet? Did you answer yet? How about a star? Let's do one of those. Ta-da! OK, so these are really simple shapes. And if you practice them, you can draw lots of different things. You just have to be really good at making these shapes and then put them together to make something else. So this, all these shapes are what I put together to make another thing but I'm not gonna draw all of it. I'm gonna draw parts of these shapes. Like I'm not gonna draw the top of the rectangle or the square, I'm just gonna draw the sides. And I'm only gonna draw part of the triangle. Instead of drawing the third part, I'm gonna leave it off. Then I'm gonna draw kind of another triangle, but I'm gonna leave the last part. And then, ooh, I'm gonna get fancy down here. This is the shoe shape. Maybe you haven't learned that one yet. But that's a shoe shape. OK. Ah, so well, let's see. We have an oval over here, right? And I'm going to draw two ovals. And I'm going to, if you do two ovals, you can connect them together like this. And then you have a giant mouth. Can you guys show me your biggest, widest mouth? I need like a reference. A little wider. Little Y, oh, that's a good one. Hold it right there while I color this in. Actually, this takes just a minute. Could we sing one verse of um, Old MacDonald? Maybe the sheep verse? Let's sing that. Ready? Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. And on that farm he had a sh I can't hear you, E-I-E-I-O. With a baba here and a baba there. Here, ba, there, ba, everywhere, ba, ba. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. All right, and you can turn those little diamond shapes into teeth. So there, it's mostly, it's a lot like coloring in the inside of a cave, if you've ever done that, drawing a big mouth. OK, what are we missing? Eyes. Eyes. You guys figured out what I'm drawing. The eye shape is a little bit like a football. And what else? A nose and some hair. Ooh, OK. A little nose. And the hair part is actually just scribbling. So here I go. And at the beginning of the story, Magnolia looks kind of nice. Looks like her mom combed her hair that morning. But by the end, she's a little stressed out. And when you get stressed out, sometimes your hair goes a little crazy. So if you just draw crazy hair, your person might look stressed out. We'll just draw one really crazy hair. Woo. OK, anything else we're missing? Arms. OK, does anybody here have trouble drawing hands? Anybody here? Hands are really hard. Lots of artists have trouble drawing hands. And so what I do is I just draw mitten hands. And they look like hearts with one side bigger than the other. And then all you need to do is draw some like noodle arms over here. Whoop. And she's almost done. We have to draw her overalls, which, by the way, are back in fashion. <laughs> I just noticed that in the store. So here's how you draw overalls. You almost draw a rectangle. Except instead of doing the bottom all the way across, you go the other way. And then you draw a couple straps. And then you draw a bunch of stripes. And the only thing we have left, I think, is her name. Mag. No. Lee. Uh. All right. So 
So I want you guys to go home and try practicing drawing things with shapes like that, okay? Because that's, if you learn how to draw shapes, you can draw lots of things. I think we have five minutes left. So next, I think we'll just do some questions. If anybody has any questions. Okay, do we have a, like a microphone or do they shout them out? There is a microphone in the aisle. If you guys have a question, go over by the aisles. There's a microphone, you can talk into it so I can hear you and everyone else can hear you. You can ask about alligators or books or anything. Um, how do you draw the eyes? How do I draw the eyes? Um, lots of practice. I just have to draw lots and lots and lots and lots of eyes. And I figured out if I draw kind of an oval with a point on them, then it kind of looks like a good eye. But it took practice to get there. How do you draw the nose? The nose? That's another weird shape that I just kind of made up, kind of like the shoe shape. But I just draw a curve on the top and then a curve on the bottom. I know that and she put the here. breathing holes in. That's important. <laughs> okay. All right. Who over here has one? Square. Oh. Were you giving me more shapes? I think so. All right. Thank you, because the square is a very important part of Magnolia. Did you draw the pictures? I did. I drew all the pictures in this book, and I wrote all the words. It took all of last summer to draw the pictures. How do you make the ears? Sorry. You know what? Here's the trick. If you put messy hair here, <laughs> you don't have to draw ears. It's kind of a shortcut I learned in art school. What's the hardest part to draw in Magnolia? The hardest part to draw Magnolia? You know what? I would say it's probably her eyes, actually. I think. Sometimes they aren't looking the same direction and stuff, so I have to draw them a lot and fix them up, so. Are there alligators in South Dakota? <laughs> you know what, I, I have an answer for you. Usually alligators don't live in South Dakota, but there's this place called the Reptile Gardens, which is the largest reptile collection in the entire United States, and it's in South Dakota. They have a lot of alligators, but they're far away from where I live. Um, where, how long did it take for you to do art school? Art school? I did the five-year plan, and so it took me five years, but I didn't know how to draw until I got to art school. So I wasn't really even practicing until I got there, which is bad. Uh, so. Yeah. What does it feel like being um, the author and the illustrator? Ooh, what does it feel like? Well, it feels pretty good that somebody thinks that my book is funny enough that they would want to print it on paper and send it all over the United States. It feels pretty good. We'll take two more questions. How do you draw the mouth? How do I draw the mouth? Draw two ovals and then you scoop them together and then you color it in like you're coloring in a cave. That's how. One more over here. How, how do you, how, how, why are there so many magnolia words in the book? Why are there so many magnolia words? Because every time magnolia gets in trouble, we have to see that she has her name on the board and she gets a check and she gets another check and another check, and an underline. And it kind of reminds us that she's getting in worse and worse trouble all the time. So, all right, I think that's it for questions. Thank you so much for coming. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.